G'day Curd Nerds, today I'm making Asiago Papato. Asiago is a firm cheese, there's two types, there's a soft, well not a soft, a semi-hard version which is aged for uh, three weeks, 21 days, and there's a a firm grating Asiago, which is up to a year, one or 12 months old. So I'm gonna be making the semi-hard version of Asiago Papado, and uh, uh, hopefully in three weeks time, we'll have a, a taste test video. Anyway, on with the cheese. So you're gonna need six liters of full cream milk, two liters of reduced fat milk, a quarter of a teaspoon of thermophilic culture, uh, 2.5 mil or half a teaspoon of calcium chloride, 2.5 mil or half a teaspoon of liquid rennet, and one and a half teaspoons of black or green peppercorns. I chose to use green peppercorns, and you'll need a saturated brine solution at about 18% saturation. So bring your milk up to the target temperature of 33 Celsius or 92 Fahrenheit, and then just remove that from the heat. We're going to add in the thermophilic culture. This is the quarter of a teaspoon. So sprinkle that over the top. There we go. And we're going to let that let that rehydrate for five minutes. So after it's rehydrated, I put it back on the heat because it was losing its temperature. Just give that a good stir top to bottom. Now you'll notice a fair bit of uh, what looks like cream on top of this milk. This is because uh, in the carton the milk had floated to the top and it was solid. So we're going to let that acidify now for 45 minutes, otherwise known as ripening. So after 45 minutes has elapsed, we're going to add in the other ingredients except for the peppercorns. So we'll just check the temperature first. And that's sitting at a nice 33 degrees Celsius, that is. And just give that a stir. And I'll put my thermometer back on and we'll just check to make sure everything's okay. So we're gonna pop in the calcium chloride now and just stir that through. Stir for about two minutes, just to make sure it's well incorporated into the milk. So we're just gonna add the rennet now and the rennet will coagulate the milk. So stir that for no more than one minute because you'll break up the protein structure otherwise. So once that's all stirred up, all you have to do is then put the lid on. So we're gonna let that set for 45 minutes and it should be firm now. If not, wait for another 10 minutes. And you're gonna cut the curd oil. Gonna check for a clean break. So this is a good indication. That was a good indication. There was no sloppiness on the sides of that break. We're gonna cut the curd into 1.25 or half inch cubes. So I did the horizontals with my curd cutter. And you can do the verticals with uh, just a knife, flat knife, long flat knife. Now, if you don't have a curd cutter, you can just do a 45 degree angle. Um, around the pot and you've got to st still get a fairly good cut. Now we're going to allow the curds to heal for five minutes. Stops them from going mushy when you first stir it. And then we're going to slowly increase the temperature to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit over the course of 20 minutes. So if you do have any large cubes in there as well, you can cut those with the, uh, the spoon so don't heat that too quickly though. 
So that's at temperature now. I just found it a little bit easier that to stir it with the whisk there. So I remove it for the heat and then stir for another 20 minutes. So there we go. Still at 40 degrees. Just making sure, checking that every so often. Don't have to do it all the time. You can see the curds have shrunk a fair bit there. So I'm just going to put it back on the heat again. So we're going to heat that up slowly. And we're going to increase it up to 48 Celsius or 118 Fahrenheit over another 20 minutes. So stirring all the time to prevent the curds from matting into one big clump. So we're at 48, nearly, that'll do. So you can see that the uh, there's a lot of whey there. A lot of whey has been expelled from the curds, which is good. It's exactly what we're after. So I'll just take that off the heat so it doesn't go up anymore. And we're going to allow the curds to settle for 20 minutes. This also helps acidify the curds a little bit more as well. So we're going to drain off the whey through... Um, a cheesecloth lined um, basket. I've got that sitting in a colander. So you can drain that off. Now you can use the whey if you want. I've chosen not to. I've got some in the fridge still. I have lots of whey. So I was just showing you the peppercorns. So put a third of the curds into the, uh, the basket and then get your teaspoon and just sprinkle uh, a layer of peppercorn. So you're looking at uh, three quarters of a teaspoon roughly. And then put another third of the curds on top. So you just estimate, there's no way of measuring it. And then sprinkle another, the remainder of the peppercorns, which is three quarters. And then you fill it with the rest of the curds. There we go. Now I find green peppercorns are good because they're quite soft. So when you cut the cheese, you don't actually rip it uh, when it's ready to eat. So I'm just making sure that uh, the cheesecloth is pulled tightly so there's no big clumps of it sitting there on the sides of the mould uh, to make any um, cosmetic marks, I suppose, in the cheese. So we're going to uh, pick that up in a second and we're going to take it over to the press. See the way that I uh, folded the cheesecloth over? and then put the foller on top. You don't put the foller on top of the cheese um, on the curds itself. You fold the cloth over and then put the foller on. So I'm going to pop that into my trusty cheese press. I'm going to press it 5 kilos or 11 pounds for one hour. Now I'm guesstimating there, as you can see, I've only closed it down a little bit. You'll see a little bit of whey come off in a second. Just make sure that you've got it evenly under the follower there and just sit that aside, room temperature for an hour. So an hour later, we'll come back and undress the cheese. You'll see it's got its shape now. So you will see there's some uh, some cheese that's come up over the follower there. We just turn that over and that helps to, uh, to put that back into the cheese again. So we're going to press it at 11 kilos or 22 pounds for an one hour again. So the whey should run off fairly clearly now because uh, all the proteins are incorporated into the, uh, the cheese itself. So I'll just uh, release that again and turn it over once more. You can see there's no bits creeping up the side of the follower now. There we go. Now the cheese basket I'm using there is a 145 mil. I don't actually sell them anymore. They're actually uh, a swimming pool skimmer baskets made from uh, food grade plastic. So they work really well. Now we're going to press again, final pressing, 20 kilos, 46 pounds for 12 hours. So the next day for me here, 
I'm just going to take that out of the uh, out of the mold. So it's got a big bit that has cracked up on the side there after I pressed it hard. So I'm just going to trim that off because uh, during aging that may collect mold and uh, it's just cosmetic, but uh, it's best if you cut it off. So just with a sharp knife, I sprayed the knife with vinegar before I started uh, and dried it off with a clean tea towel. Okay, we're going to pop that in the brine now. So this is a saturated 18% brine. I'm going to brine that for 10 hours and turn it once. Notice how I sprinkle a little bit of salt there because I didn't think I had enough brine in there to hold it down. So just sprinkle some salt over the top um, and that'll help absorb salt as well. So then flip that over at the 5 hour mark and uh, sprinkle a little bit more salt on top as well. Anyway, so we pull this out after the 10 hours of brining. So we're going to air dry that now at room temperature for two to three days. And we're going to place it in a ripening box. And we're going to ripen at 12 to 13 degrees or 53 to 55 Fahrenheit at 85 percent humidity. So during the first week we just wash and turn it daily. So I'm washing with a simple brine solution there. Then after the first week we turn and wash the cheese with a simple brine solution for uh, twice a week up until the uh, 21 day mark. Well there you have it curd nerds, I've got my Asiago Papado here in the ripening box, I'll show you that in a second. Now if you want to mature this any further you can, after two months of washing it twice weekly then you can simply brush it, I've got a little soft brush here, this is a nail brush or I think a baby brush or something like that. Anyway, a nice simple little soft brush, uh, it doesn't have natural bristles um, so they won't fall out and go all over your cheese. So just dip that in your simple brine solution and just brush the cheese down. Do that once weekly and you can do you can mature this cheese up to two years so it's a very long long lasting cheese we'll see what it looks like after two weeks let's have a quick look there it is there it's got a nice solid rind which is really good you can still see some of the peppercorns in there there's no off smells and you can see a little bit i don't know if you can there closely but you can see a little bit of the salt um, it's not mold or anything, it's just salt from when I've been washing it. Uh, and it hasn't cracked and it's still firm in the middle. Now I'll be cracking this open in about a week or a week or two weeks time. Uh, this is going to be the fresh style of Asiago Papado and we'll go from there and have a taste test. It should be pretty good. Anyway, so if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That'll be fantastic. And don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel as well. So if you want to see another cheese like this, just click through here and you'll see the video for Romano, uh, which probably has a little bit more flavour than this one. Don't forget that you can also uh, support the channel over here at Patreon. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and we'll see you next time.